David Dopecho and Dapo down now. And we're live. Welcome. 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 <laughs> it is Saturday morning, so you know it's time for another live edition of the Extra Point. We got T Sizzle down in the DR with the hang time on the locks game. Y'all check out. Can we get a little spin? Can you give us a little spin real quick? Y'all see, see, look, y'all see my shit hanging. You see it, man. You see, we see your shoulder blade tight with it. Okay. All right. <laughs> now, Mike. Shouts out to you right, right now coming from the big house. Uh, can we get a, a picture of your shirt? Okay, look at Mike with the hang time. We see you. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Ohio, take you notice. Go. You can go get World it's B3. Be a four piece. You can go get um, uh, Bill Belichick. You can go get Nick Saban. You can go get um, uh, uh, Terry McLaurin. First you can go get everybody. You You're said, still going to catch your L. First of all, you said go get World B3. I can't. Mike, where, 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 where's the, she going? All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have a jam-packed show for you, as we always do. Um, but but let's go ahead and and get the the elephant out of the room, out of the way. Now, last week, Super Bowl Fifty Eight was epic in every sense of the word. Not only was it an overtime thriller. But it was also a ratings juggernaut. They said 123 million people tuned in to watch Kansas City and San Fran duel it out in the desert out there in Vegas. And at one point, it peaked at 202 million when Usher hit the stage. Now, before we get into the game, your thoughts <laughs> on Usher? How, what do you what do you think about about Usher? What, how did he do? Man, he could have did a whole show. I was just, yeah, Usher oh. baby. Okay, I mean, right. I mean, there's a she reason, there's a reason why, why he has a Vegas show. It. I was just yeah, saying, yeah. I mean, there's a reason why he has a Vegas show. Like, he could do hour, two hours, like, nothing yeah, but hits. Uh, when he came out on the roller skates, I was like, don't do this on national TV. Just, just stay up right. Usher, uh, Usher mean on them skates, baby. And then he had I, to, I learned. I, I, had I learned. I, I had no clue. Out there dumped, with no sheet music. If you if people follow me, when, mm -hmm. when I say with no sheet music. Sonic Boom of the South out there playing with him. Shouts out to Jackson State. Don't know. There will be no Jackson State praise on this show with an aristocrat. Hey, you got to give here. the folks the praise when they need the praise. You know what? And shouts out to Howard University, who will be hosting Tennessee State University for their homecoming this year. That should be fun. Won't be nowhere near it, but that should be fun. All right. I think so, we should go. You, you want to put that on the bucket list? Because you said Howard was a party town. Man, you know, my cousin went to Howard, and I think we partied from the time the plane landed until we got back on that plane, barely propped up. I ain't mad at that. Yeah, let's 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 see what that what, what that schedule do like. Now, no, Tasha, you you had a week to digest, and just in the interest of fairness for everyone that's watching, I have not talked to her about this game since the confetti rained down in Allegiant Stadium. I wanted to give it a week, give her time to kind of get away from it, to digest, to decompress before we came on here to find out how she's really doing. Good morning, Martrice Elaine Hastings. All right, Natasha, take us through the mind of a 49er fan as you watch this game unfold. The floor is yours. It's a safe place. Y'all, we got brown liquor alert. <laughs> I'd already took a few swigs out the bottle before I came with the props. Let me tell you something. When, of course, I'm, everybody want to sit up and act like they knew the overtime rules. I had no clue about the overtime rules. Because when they elected to take the ball, I'm like, yeah. But the guy, remember the guy put on the phone, Corey, last week. He was like, no, nah, sis, you know they changed the overtime rules. So he's explaining to me the overtime rules. So I'm like, no, can they go back and change it? The game in the beginning, of course, I was excited because my team was winning. But everyone else was saying it was asleep. But, of course, whenever your team is winning, it's always exciting. You don't give a damn what's going on. Uh. The game was actually a good game despite the ending. When I saw Kansas City moving the ball in that overtime, I grabbed my purse and I walked out. 
because I knew it was over. Okay, set the stage. Where were you watching the game? You were at a watch party? No, uh, my friend, the guy that was on the phone, he had a, he always gets villas, but he had a penthouse villa and we were over there. He had everything set up and it's funny. No one wanted Kansas City to win. They just wanted them to make the spread. Everyone was kind of, well, we had two people that were rooting for Kansas City, but everybody in there wanted the 49ers to win, but they wanted to beat, you know, win their parlays. Because one guy was betting at the halftime parlays, and I think he ended up winning like 2000 over 2000 bucks on his parlay. Oh, no, get on your but it was just, I mean, I was so excited because, again, we ain't been there in 40 years. Um, I'm going to get into, I don't know how far you're going to go into it with this, but. No, y'all was there just a couple of years ago. But I was not impressed. Let me let, let me say this in a, in a good way. I was impressed with how Purdy was playing, but I was not impressed with his play. And okay, I, no, we're, okay, no, we're going to, we're going to dive a little deeper into, into that part there. Um. Well, let, let's 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 go to third quarter, Mike. You stop it because I don't even see what's there. Like it, it's just it's blank. I don't I don't see it. What, what was that? Just a blank look? I, I don't know. I don't know what it said. <laughs> it was me. Like, 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 okay. Now, okay, so you got a ten point lead. You come out of halftime. Usher, baby, had you sweating out your your locks. What from the third quarter on? What what were you thinking as a 49er fan? Was it a here we go again, or were you still pretty confident? Well. To me, when that block kicked by Moody, that, that changed the game. When they blocked that extra point by Moody, that, that was it for me. Because I, I tell people, I don't, I hate Patrick Mahomes. I always have. I probably always will. I don't like him. You're not alone. But you can't deny that this man is out here balling. You cannot take that away from him. His style of play. Everything about this man says, I'm going to get this. When it got, like I said, when it got to the point and it was tied up, and I, the only thing I was thinking was, damn, that fucking extra point. That's all that was on my mind. Because that was literally the difference in the game, was yes. that extra point. But, yeah. I mean, because who's to say, I mean, we always say if if was the fifth. Kansas City could have went down there and did a two-point conversion. You never know. Right, but, but in the end of the game, they had six seconds left and didn't have to run another play because it was just a three-point game to go to overtime. Exactly. That would have been totally different if they had to punch that in the end zone on that last play. Circa Titans. Go ahead. Right. So, um, overall, of course, I was upset because my team didn't win. It wasn't the snoozer of a game that everyone is saying it was. It was I actually, thought it was fantastic myself. It was actually a pretty pretty good game, except for the outcome for me. Right, I right. wanted the outcome to be different, of course. Right. Now, Mike, on the first drive when San Francisco won the toss and took the ball in the first quarter, mm -hmm. you sent three words to our group chat. Run the ball. In the first half, San Francisco had great balance. CMC was getting loose. I mean, yeah, he had a fumble. Yeah. But still, they were still dominant in that first half, mixing it up with the run and the pass game. Why did they get away from that in the second half? What happened in the second half, Mike, with, with the run the ball? The same thing that happened <laughs> on both of the playoff games. Like, they stopped running the ball in the third quarter specifically, and then they try to get back at it on the fourth quarter, but a little too late. Um, I, I will give props to the Kansas City defense. Um, like Paul said, like they just they made some adjustments. They made a lot of great stops um, and they kind of forced the hand and kind of what they said. They wanted Purdy to throw the ball. Um, but I, I, I think my biggest thing and, and the reason why I didn't like this Super Bowl was of how inconsistent the refs were. Uh, on the on the offensive a side lot, specifically a lot, of holding, a lot of holding a lot of holding that wasn't being called specifically for the d line on san francisco like mm -hmm. there was a lot of holding and i was like man i get it that you don't want to change the whole game but kansas city led in holding calls for a reason like they that's all they do like and now all of a sudden know. they get to the super bowl and ain't no holding yeah i didn't like that okay so uh, and I think it goes back to the last three Super Bowls. They haven't been called for holding. Um, 
I'll have to go back and and, and rewatch it. I didn't I wasn't paying attention to that as much because of the fact of that they were getting to Mahomes. They got three sacks. Maybe to y'all's point, if they weren't calling holding, it would have been a lot more. I know he hadn't been sacked all playoffs, and I thought, well, if you if you get Mahomes on the ground, then you got a great shot. There was no time in that game until overtime where I thought that Kansas City was going to win that game. San Francisco, yeah. first of all, uh, shouts out to to Dre Greenlaw. That was just, that was that was Man. one of the most underrated parts of why that oh, game. And when went. he went out, I mean, like that, and I mean, we were actually watching. This wasn't like a party party. Like everyone right. that was there was actually watching the game. And my boy Will, shouts out to Will, uh, my boy in OKC. Will has torn both of his Achilles. And soon when we were watching and they showed it, Will said, oh, he said, oh, he done. He said, that's his Achilles. Like Will called it. Can you can you imagine you going out there to try to defend, to win? And then there you go with with an injury, something simple running onto the field. And, And we're not talking about the gunner or the long snapper. Dre was getting busy in that first quarter. Dre was everywhere. Pacheco couldn't get anything going. He was stopping the run. And not only was that was he being effective, it was the energy he was bringing to that defense. Right. That and I'm not going to make lights it, out in the first quarter. Right. I'm not going to make excuses, but I mean, a lot of the 49er players really did not show up. If you just really kind of want to say Greenlaw going out hurt us immensely. I mean, you even had Chase Young showing up for a little bit. That's you- where that's where I'm glad you said that because that's where mm-hmm. I was like, uh oh, Steve Wooks called him out a couple of days ago. And if Chase Young is getting to the quarterback and Bosa's getting to the quarterback, but Bo- then it's Bosa, be was, Good morning, Bosa was Steve. putting pressure. Stephanie. Go ahead, Mike. I, I think the reason why I saw a lot of holding plays is because I had a bet on Bosa to get at least a half a sack. And I was specifically watching Bosa for most of the game. And there were so, so many holding calls on Bosa. I was like, man. And I'm thinking, you know, because even in high school, I played the game. And when you get held for the whole game, mentally, that's exhausting. Um, so I, can, I, I can't even imagine what he was going through that whole game. But it, to me, it all kind of stemmed down to coaching. And someone, someone tweeted this. And I was, I was kind of thinking along these lines. Shanahan was, as he always does, he played to hold, to not lose. He didn't. You know what? Okay, okay, right. I want you to pause right there because Ray just checked in. He's a 49er fan as well. And um, so I want to I want to ask this with him on the line as well. Poe up. Um, let's let's play the blame game. Let's let's slice up the pie. Well, who do you put the blame on for the second half collapse? Because everything was clicking in the first half. I mean, I put it, I put it solely on 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 Shanahan. I'm, I mean, he's he's be, and who the, the um, Cam that Cameron that we had on the show um, a couple of weeks ago. He tweeted that, and it's like, why do you what what does he have against the run? Does the run have some photos with him and some goats? <laughs> why did you abandon the run? Because what? as soon as they started running again, what happened? They and scored. I said, yeah. I said, what is the main the, the common denominator in all of Shanahan's losses is your ass, Evelyn. It's, see, Ray, it's on the coaching. It's your ass, Evelyn, because you did the shit to, oh, my God, the Falcons. Oh, my God. That was heartbreaking. Right. You did it in the last Super Bowl when you want to put the ball in Garoppolo's hands. Why? And Garoppolo, shout out to Garoppolo, suspended uh, PED performing in Hanson. What the hell you what you what you enhancing? Look, he's trying to get one more team to get one more deal. You know them <laughs> legs are weak, they wobbly. Anyway, um, I put it solely on on Shanahan, and now everybody wants to come out and blame Steve Steve Wilkes. And then you got Bosa's ass talking about, oh, yes, we, we didn't do what we supposed to do. Oh, so you just didn't do what you're supposed to do, come overtime. Because no. had y'all won, Steve Wilson would still be employed. I'm glad you went, you're going right down my list, Tasha. I love it. Now, now Mike, I want to bring you in here because you're the defensive guy as well. Steve Wilkes, I wanted to play a game of fair or foul. Now, now Ray wants to give you your flowers. He said, Tasha said it best. He was playing um, hold and not for the win. Now, I got to lose this gum on this one because this is getting good. Now, Mike, we saw that Steve Wilkes was fired 48 hours after 
the game, almost to make it seem like that he was being used as the scapegoat. I thought the 49ers yeah. defense was phenomenal in that game, given the I mean, they were top five the whole season. So I'm, I'm sorry, Mike, to, 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 I mean, Paul, to cut you off. And no, 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 no. This, this, it's your team. You do your thing. coming in now talking about, oh, the 49ers defense wasn't this, wasn't this. When was they wasn't this and all of that? They've been top five the whole season. So now all of a sudden they lose the Super Bowl and it's, it's all Steve Wilkes fault? The 49ers defense had a critical stop early on Kansas City's first drive to stop Pacheco from possibly scoring a touchdown. Then they turn around and open the second half with a game-changing interception. It wasn't Wilkes' fault they didn't cash that in because you were up, what, seven, had a chance to go up 14. Um, Ray's like, no! <laughs> Mama said Steve Wilkes was done wrong. Mike, is it fair foul to throw this all on Steve Wilkes? No, that's foul. Uh, I... The thing I didn't like was that the offensive line was talking about, or some of the offensive line was talking about how they were hung over, uh, specifically like on one of them last plays and to where uh, Purdy didn't have enough time to hit um, Ayuk in, oh, in the oh, oh, left or corner. Debo or Christian McCaffrey. There were three people and, 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 wide and, open on that play. Like, I got something to that. And Keep I was on. like, so, so why are you not holding the offensive line coach accountable for your players? Thank oh, you, what? because that oh, real quick, one play in particular that Mike is talking about, they rushed the hell out of Purdy. He had Ayuk right here, and he had Debo. When they play, when Debo ran ran to the little garbage, he Purdy missed them because the offensive line. I mean, and the offensive line is the weakness. If you did not have Trent Williams, bless Trent Williams, hard. He if had you a tough game. Have Williams on that line, the 49ers wouldn't even be where they are. That offensive line. Is Evelyn that offensive line ain't worth a damn? But Ooh, they and, and Ray chime in here too. If if, if, if if Ray is like you preaching, um, whose idea was it to leave Chris Jones all pro tackle unblocked on that third and four, um, in overtime? It was a, it was a dude football. that was hung over. He was hung over. He Brandon said that you had had put uh Sneed in a blender. He was laying on the ground. Uh, Ayuk was a, in the end zone, wide open. Debo, I'm not Debo, Jawan Jennings, who shouts out to him. He was on his way to being Super Bowl MVP. And, I mean, and then when you get your, your your wide receiver being the only one that throws a touchdown. <laughs> now, now Purdy did get one late in the game, didn't he? He, he threw one to uh to Jennings because Jennings caught one and threw one. He threw one to Jennings in the second half. Man, That's look. when they went got back to the run game and CMC started eating. But there were three people. He hit him with the in and out. He was open on the flat. Ayuk was was Ayuk's head, hands was on his head for like a whole minute after that play. When they did the aerial shot yeah. of that Mike, he did a post route. There was nobody there, but Chris Jones didn't give Purdy enough time. I can't put that on Purdy. He didn't have enough time to get anything on that ball. It would probably would have fluttered and got intercepted if he tried to hit Ayuk. That was on the offensive line. Now, Mike, take me back to this hungover because I missed this thing. This, one of the starting offensive linemen was hungover. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean that's what he said. I, I forgot his name, but but yeah, that's what he said. He's like, yeah, I, I admit, uh, I was a little hungover. <laughs> like, it's Sam a Super Fran. Bowl. <laughs> Sam Fran. So, so we're gonna put this on Wilkes. When to Tasha's point, they were top five in scoring and yards allowed. They had two critical, critical interceptions that could have, I mean, turnovers they forced that could have flipped that game to a two touchdown game. And then once you went up two touchdowns, you take away Pacheco. You you you're able to pin your ears back and rush Chase and 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 rush um, Bosa. I, I was just I, I was just dumbfounded at how that game went. Now Stephanie said zero discipline. Does that um, now he says Hufunga was out also one of your offensive linemen. Now the zero discipline. What where do you sit with Shanahan now? This is the th the third rodeo. Look. I'm telling you right now, that window for the 49ers to go out here, dominate more than the NFC. You look at it. Say it ain't so, Tasha. You no, know, I'm now y'all know I ain't gonna sit up here and lie just because it's my team. If they shitty, I'm gonna say they shitty. Now, you got Debo often injured. He does come out and play. But he's always hurt, and he I couldn't don't get any I separation love. with that bad hamstring. They were blanketing him. When when Debo is is yeah. healthy, one hundred percent Debo, he's unstoppable. 
Then you got Christian McCaffrey. What's the lifespan on one on running backs? Right. And you how get, and can you can you get 1800 out of him again? He's always injured. Right. And he was relatively healthy this year. Like th everything set up perfectly for the 49ers this year. Right. Then you look at uh look at our tight end. He was where was he in the game? Where All was, pro. You you didn't he was talking him. trash while a fumble was on the ground. Only time I saw Mike, him. Mike, say it ain't so. Right. Tell it. It was true. And shit. The only time I saw him was running in that damn tunnel when he was injured. Then you now, got, again, I mentioned Trent Williams. Trent Williams has been in the league for over 10 years. How yeah. much more, how much longer is he going to play? He cannot right. carry that whole offensive line on his own. With that window closing, you're going to lose weapons. Purdy is going to revert back to what everyone is saying he is anyway. He's not going to be able to develop because – I hope somebody else said he in this particular game he looked like seventh round because of some of the decisions he was not making. I think that's a bit unfair because if your line is not giving you any time on the third and four where they could have ran out the clock, they sent a blitz up the middle. He didn't have anywhere to go with the ball. Dude was Again, all over him. But that is – you think about all the quarterbacks, RG3, who stay there and get the, get the hell beat out of them. What right. happens? They, they become second and third string quarterbacks and they don't develop. Then it'll start the whole process of us over again, trying to find another quarterback, trying to find some more wide receivers, trying to get another running back. And then they're going to covet a, a quarterback over some offensive line play like the Titans. Y'all do, like do like the shiny toys. Mike, like, do, do you agree with this? Shanahan going to yeah. turn into Marv Levy yeah. with, of the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, I do agree with that. I also agree with Ray's uh, previous statement, too, that, that that it's over for the 49ers. I agree with that. Yeah, the, it, it, and that's the truth. Uh, the, on, the, on that one play, and everyone was uh, – what's the kid's name? Ward, when he didn't jump on the ball. Because when I was watching it in real oh, time – Oh, yeah, instead of trying to pick it up and run with it, yeah. But that's, that's instinctual. Well, now, right, usually right, only right. the big but head – But he did notice that they hit his player's leg, and he tried right, to – Right, so that play. was good thinking about him. Right, but initially right. watching it, I'm screaming, what the hell is he doing? Right. But then when you see the replay, it's the big heavy's first instinct to fall on it. But if you got some speed or some umph about right. you, you're going to want to pick that ball up and run it. It happened in the Rose Bowl with Michigan. He tried to pick the ball up instead of just diving on it. And and that go ahead, Mike. I was I was just gonna I'm kind of baffled by the 49ers performance. I it, three Super Bowls in nine years. Yeah. And you don't win one of them. Like it's it's a little bit more, it's more it's starting to become I guess it is the culture now. It's like, man. I mean, but, <laughs> like, but the thing yeah. when Cap was in, Cap was actually playing to win. He just got intercepted. But that was the, a hell of a play, too, yeah, by the Legion yeah, of Boom. Yeah, One of the greatest of defenses play. of all time. But with these last two Super Bowls, they are playing scared when they need to be out there playing to go for the jugular. And that is so un 49 They're losing like. their boom box. Right. Right. Where's the boom box in the overtime? Yeah. Now, did you Give have it back. a problem with the players throwing the coach under the bus saying they didn't know the overtime rules? Did you have a problem no, with that? because he should have told them. But you, if that is your job, should have told him. What are you talking about? The fans I, know. What are you talking about? I didn't know. I didn't know either, Mike. He You're the have, only Encyclopedia Britannica over there. He should. I he know have, either. He should. I have, sent y'all that. Come on. He should have. When they knew it was going in overtime, get the team together. Hey, guys, if this such 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 such, this is what we're going to do. If they didn't know, but that right. is your job to know the rules. Of one of the game. players, one of the players did come out and say, like, no, we we have overtime practice every single practice. They know the overtime rules. So wait, wait, right. He was paid to say that. Debo had the boom box and was ineffective. Eleven targets with three catches. I think he had like three catches. Yeah, no minimum impact plays. This is this is the, the 49ers game in a nutshell. Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and George Kittle combined for less than 100 yards. Yeah. I think McCole Hartman had more yards than them by himself. McCole Hartman, who was yeah. a cast off from the worst offense in the league with the Jets. Jets. Like, how, how? How do you lose this game? Your third string receiver was eaten. Juwan Jennings had the game of a lifetime. Shouts out to Tennessee boy, uh, Juwan Jennings, who was about to be Super Bowl MVP. 
he was gonna be now. See, see, we bringing up, we bringing up emotions in Ray. He's like, man, <laughs> because you had it right there when it was third My and four. Mike, third and four, you convert the first down, you run down the clock, and Moody's go, Moody's money. He gonna kick that game, that walk off. You were one down away from running the clock down. They didn't have no more timeouts. I just you, still, I just still see easy. on that play. You get that ball to your offensive when player of the when year. When kick was blocked, I was thinking. Okay, we still got it. But when it well, came to it, I was like, that block kick. Like, that was just it for me, was that block kick. One, One down. down. With with three all pros on your offense and a, and a left yeah. tackle is going to the Hall of Fame. in Trent So Williams. my question, I got a question. So, because, you know, I don't got no, I ain't got nothing in this game. And I know y'all have more, a little bit more because Eagles fan only have one. I get it. So does this move the 49ers – in a worse position than the Cowboys, as far as like taking oh, no, more slack. Mm -mm. Let's let's not let's not. Uh, as a and question, hold on, wait a I'm minute. A question. Now, now, worse than that. Next, so, hold on, Tasha. Next, <laughs> I, got a I said I was going. I said I was going to save this because I couldn't use it three weeks ago when when I wanted to. But Ray, my good well, old look, brother Ray, and Ray Claude, says it does. My sister Claude. Y'all the Cowboys West. Y'all are the West. Look at look at here. Yes. It does. <laughs> look, come on home, Tasha. Come on. Like, I got a soft slander spot right here for you. We can you know hold what? each other. As we the crime, like as this. crime mob said, run up, get done up. And just like Glow and Yeah, Glow said in the opening, run up, get done up. Now, Ray says Mahomes beat us, not KC, but I don't want to bury this lead. Now we got four that, that Tasha. The thing is, it's okay. You're gonna be. You're gonna have. Look, you're already the Vegas favorite to win it next year. I don't know why on God's green earth y'all exactly. are. Exactly. They need. They need to lower that because you got. I. You got here mad and family members pulling. Right. Y'all doing cowboys like things. Right. Now y'all family cowboys. members are they popping be off. Mad. You may be right. They want to be the cowboys so bad. Yeah. I don't know oh, why. No. Don't say this on the day I'm wearing a Michael Jordan jersey. Like, like <laughs> this is Freaky Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Mike, you stirring the pot. But, but, <laughs> I mean, but, it is, but it is true, like what, what Ray was saying. Like, we held, we held Kansas City to what, 19 points in 60 minutes? That mm -hmm. is an excellent performance by Steve Wilkes. And, and, and real on an aside, Eric B. Enemy, get on out the way. You, 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 we got a new martyr in the NFL. His name is Steve Wilkes. You get one year at, at Denver before they, they send you high and dry with no talent on the team. And you, then you they tied that man with all the all the DC posit man. That that's dirty work. Carolina, Matt Rule went to bed. You clean it up. You had PJ Washington and them out there balling. You didn't even get the interim tag removed. You had to go be a DC somewhere else. And then Shanahan fired you after one year when Tasha just gave you the stats: top five defense, mm -hmm. top five point defense. You had a magnificent performance in the Super Bowl. It's not your fault that the offense did not capitalize. And go up further when they had a chance when the defense was holding them. I do not put it in there. Stephanie says if it ain't like broke, don't fix it. It's almost like he doesn't understand the best defense is keeping Mahomes off the field. Yes, to okay. go back to what Ray just said. He said Mahomes beat us, not KC. Y'all, yeah. y'all, y'all left him too much time on that clock, and y'all yes. let him get on the it that just goes to show you I can be on the field for four minutes and score. Where you've been on the and because at halftime they was only down one, it was a one score game at halftime. Yeah, it was seven points. After all of that, like like they they were physically beaten on the field in that first half. I was like, uh oh, damn, I'm gonna have to go through a whole year of, of Tasha saying all my teams won, and I I found myself rooting for for uh, Mahomes to lose because quite frankly, I'm sick of him like. Like, I didn't even know my mama didn't like him until Super Bowl Sunday. That was a shock to me. My mama liked everybody. He was up in the booth the whole season. You, you bring the man out of the booth, and, and both of us throwing shade at him, too. Have him on the field. Have him in the booth. Have him That's on disrespectful, Mike, and you know it. You bring your defensive coordinator out of the booth so you can get in his ear on the sideline. And, and when, Bosa, is, when is your fault, Evelyn? Right. Bosa? You said after the game that we were not prepared for the run pass option. You crashed the line of scrimmage and left that hole wide open. It wasn't Steve Wilkes. You went running after Pacheco, and 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 Mahomes was like, "Lottie, Tasha on fourth and one." Was that the game for you? Because that was it. 
You was up three. In overtime, you stop them, it's over. Fourth and one. Mike, fourth and one. We ain't got no spot on the quarterback. Yeah, that's Mark unacceptable. I, I said third down or third, fourth down, Mahomes is a, is a problem, Remember, too. Yeah, guys, I left. I was watching not the game, but you know when you go on ESPN.com and you can do the little game cast and it yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. Tecmo Bowl. That game cast is dope. That's what I was watching. And when I saw them kept moving, I just did my phone. I scrolled up, put that shit in my purse, and I sat in the car. You know what? <laughs> I, I empathize with you and I, and because I do that too. I'm not going to watch you walk my team down and then celebrate. I'm not going to watch it live. I'm going to turn that shit off, and then y'all going to have to tell me about that later. Like when you, because you get that feeling in your stomach. Whenever it's your team, because you know your team, when you know your team is like, uh-oh, the momentum is totally going the other way. I'm like, nope, can't do it. I didn't but watch you know, 4th and 1 is, in the Rose Bowl, Mike. And it, I and didn't watch it. Just, it's not just the 49ers. If it's a team that I am rooting for, if they lose, I don't watch Sports Center. For, I've not watched Sports Center first take or any of that for a week. And even on my podcast, when they talked about the game, I was I'm, I'm fast forward it because I don't want to hear it. And and ladies and gentlemen, to we the me and Mike who can be two trolls in in a pod, we raised up this whole week. We didn't mention nothing about the game. We wanted to give her a week to to. Oh to, no! If y'all if y'all would have trolled me, y'all know what it would have been. <laughs> y'all know what it would have been. Oh oh we got. Y'all already know. Uh, it would have well, been nothing. It would have been the same thing we're talking about right now. Y'all already know what it would have been. My, okay, so who's who who's whose season was more disappointing? The Cowboys or the 49ers? Damn. So you already know the answer. Go ahead and say it. Push the button. The Cowboys. Push the button. The Cowboys. No, stop it. Stop. Run up, get done up, run up, run up, get done up. Right, look at Ray, the Cowboys. Thank How you, Ray. Old God's green oi. Did Thank the you, Cowboys Ray. have a worse season? No, than you know why? You know y'all were favored to win the Super Bowl. Because uh -uh, the whole season, y'all kept telling us our quarterback couldn't get us there. We got there. The whole season, Gerald has been out here popping his, his, his prosthetic teeth and gums. Talking Don't about do that. Don't this, they wouldn't. They're not prosthetic. Thank you, Ray. His food said wouldn't. See, I heard that. see I was going to be nice. See, I, I, no, I was going to be nice. No, but this no, is, no, this no, is, no, this no, is, no. Uh -uh. This is my problem. Now, Mike, damn you for this because I wasn't going to do this today, but they done made me. Look, this is my problem with you damn 49er fans. Why do I have on red today? I want to throw this shit in the garbage because because <laughs> Jordan. Hey, what I you know want about the ahead. Cowboys' futility? And yes, it has been thirty long years. We we land in the bottom of the Titanic in the Atlantic, just like y'all. But y'all in the submersible. Y'all in the submersible. Y'all <laughs> down there too. But hold on. Here's the difference. Cowboy fans are narcissists within ourselves. We like we them boys. We go win the championship. We believe we the Cowboys. Y'all 49er fans. The 49ers in general, all y'all do is look down on other franchises and troll. I see all you 49er fans that live in Nashville always taking shots at the Titans. I see you always. You be the first one to comment when the Cowboys lose. But when y'all lose, it's always old and maybe it's next year. You are no better than the Cowboys. You're worse. You're worse. And you know why you're worse? Because you're done turned into the damn Buffalo Bills. You, you're the bridesmaids of the new millennium. They're going to get you all the way up there and it ain't your damn wedding dress. I'm sick of it. you 49er fans. I'm glad you lost. I'm glad Patty Mahomes put you on that pedestal just to knock you off. You're 49er fans. You're arrogant. You're disrespectful. Martrice, don't do it. She said, no, this ain't getting good. Tell us why you really hurt, Paul. Tell us why you really hurt. And you're disrespectful. <laughs> and, and as soon as the Cowboys lost, I go on Facebook and I see a big old post from Tasha T. Sizzle talking about, I could have known better than to pick them Cowboys. They ain't no count. Blah, blah, blah. When the Cowboys, when y'all lose, we just mind our business. We didn't troll y'all like that. Y'all are so mean to us and cruel to us. And you don't have to. And you got a little winning streak against us. Now, now I'm sorry, Denise, Denise, but they did it. They did it. She said, I'm big, man. 
He, he is. <laughs> Tell him. He big man. Y'all play, y'all play to beat us. We play to beat somebody in the Super Bowl. We ain't the same, bro. Y'all are worse. We you ain't lose, the same. You're the biggest y'all, choker. Y'all, y'all count little victories as, as big things. We don't count little victories. And that's, that's his that's his point though. That's his point though. The Cowboys go after the small victories. Like they just trying to do something in the playoffs. At least we think it big. We shot for the yeah, stars we, and we out. 40, no, 49ers. No, no, got no bu- y'all put that powder in there, sticking that stick in there. And, and picking 49ers. It up. That powder was from the 90s. Don't bring up them, them powder days no more. You know, we had that was a rough transition out of that powder. The 49ers are favorites before the season started. Mike, say that again because Sasha ain't listening. Yeah, the 49ers are favorites. The Cowboys weren't favorites for the Super Bowl. The 49ers were. Y'all choked you this season. Everybody, because we already know the Cowboys ain't ish. They Y'all choked. Last year, you complained that you didn't have a healthy quarterback. No, no, no. That is true. Mike. Say it again, Mike. I said last year, y'all complained that y'all didn't have a healthy quarterback. I mean, go ahead, Mike. I already said it. I ain't saying it. Oh, well, we didn't have a healthy quarterback against the Eagles, but y'all know I was betting on black that game. But <laughs> I mean, because I mean, <laughs> he he didn't. His arm was like this, but I still think they would have beat the Eagles, or the game would not have been a runaway as See, it was. This is what I'm talking about. We were an injured team, Mike. This year, you were healthy as a horse. You was healthy. You had a ten point lead. We had a, we had a defensive player tore his Achilles running on the field. We had Debo pull up with an injury. Half of our team, man, there you go. We was broken up. It's the whole football. Team. You're gonna have injuries. Like, we still went Mark out there and played. Y'all pop, no ish. Stanton. Y'all always talking. Y'all let Gerald get out there. Y'all scared of Gerald. Y'all they don't, don't want to do this. Y'all don't tell him to sit down. <laughs> y'all scared of Jerry. That's why people talk about y'all. It's because of Jerry. And your owner pop and lock. Our owner don't say nothing. <laughs> I no, own no, no, the New York City back in the Now we got the injury report. report. Ray, you're yeah. a good brother, and you're a good fisher, and, and, and you're a good brother. You know what I'm three saying? Three Super so Bowls. Three Ray, Super Bowls in the last nine years, and you lost all three. Ray, you fish? Yes, he fish. You ain't never seen him post them big old fish. Oh, okay, no. Ray. We need to, we need to get, yeah. We now, let's get, now, let's get to Purdy. Since y'all getting on my damn nerves this morning, on a beautiful Saturday morning here in Dallas, Texas. Are you? He ain't resigning. He gonna be with the Titans this year. Cause he, he ain't resigning. Cause yeah, he, he, he told y'all. Um, he said yes, ma'am. I, no, you're being, you're being, you, you're being a little. Uh, what's the word? You're being too humble, Ray. You no, no. You you bass fish. You do that Ray ESPN you two type fish. You know the joints that you wear to come up here and you get in there and you Ray gets down like he had them big old like the big old ESPN two fish. <laughs> Okay, I got Ray, 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 I got Ray, Ray, now, now, Ray, since we got your attention, I'm going to ask you and Tasha and Mike this. Brock Purdy, I have no problem with him this year. He had a phenomenal season. He he checked all the boxes for me as far as what I would want in a quarterback. If 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 Will Levis can, can be on the same trajectory as uh, Brock Purdy, I would be one happy fan. I loved his game. I love his moxie and his quiet confidence. The stage wasn't too big for him. He wasn't out there skipping it in the dirt. He led a, a, a really good drive to, to get the lead with a minute left in the game. But here's the question. He ain't Mr. Irrelevant no more. Somebody, y'all, it's about time to pay this man. Is he a $50 million man, Michigan Mike? I think I think he has to be. I don't think the 49ers have a choice. If y'all pay Daniel Jones that money, y'all best Ooh, pay Brock Nice recovery, because he is a gazillion times better than Daniel Jones. <laughs> That's now, Ray true. Is giving a caveat. He's saying, but but he got players though. He does. So what do you do? So, because you can't not. Pay, I mean, you can you can't even franchise. I mean, you can franchise tag him, but he doesn't get a fifth year because he wasn't drafted is, in the first round. You y'all know what happens usually when these pay, players get paid. What happens? Daniel Jones. Remember, he got his money. And then they were starting some dude named Danucci. <laughs> no, Daniel Jones was already doing this when they gave him the money. They was just yeah. stupid. So Ray says no. Look, maybe 30. No. That's what Ryan Tannehill is making. Ray. Ray. 30 million? Yeah. I wish. 
We, again, because you don't know what weapons he's going to. I mean, of course, we think uh, we know McCaffrey's going to be there. We know Debo's going to be. We don't know if Ayuk is going to be there. Jennings is going to be there. He I would still, franchise tag him if I were y'all. I would he still tag has him. a decent lineup when it comes to players. They need to get him some offensive line help. Yeah. If that doesn't come through the draft, then we're going to be yeah. at this place again next year, 49 Ones Saints. that don't drink the night before the Super Bowl. Right. We're going to have – Don't admit it either. What the hell is this wrong year, with you? 49 is losing in the NFC Championship or 49 is losing in the Super Bowl because you ain't got no offensive line help. But, now, again, it was a lot of throws that I think Purdy still could have made that he did not make. Oh, that's true. That's He's still true. young. Like, yeah. I mean – and normally where he would try to run, I think he was trying to opting more for the throw, kind of like Lamar. It if, was if, the same game plan that to Mike's opening salvo, where the Broco did was, the same thing. I mean, I Baltimore was, did the same thing to just stop and started passing the ball to Right. Much. I was more concerned and praying that we didn't get the 49er team that showed up against the Ravens. That was my biggest concern. Well, like I like I knew this would be a juicy topic. But I didn't know it was gonna be this juicy. But we 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 gotta move through the, the through the script because because we have to talk about the champs too. And conspicuously missing is is is, is one Justin. Um, right, where Justin at? We get a break today. No, we get a break that we deserve a break today because ain't nobody checking for the Chiefs. We sick of it now. Yeah. Next. Now, we're all in agreement now that that this is a full fledged dynasty that we watching with the Chiefs now. Now, Kenny, man, we're going to hit you with the Titans staff questions in a couple of weeks after we come back from vacation because the Titans don't belong in no conversation that got to do with the Super Bowl right now. At all. <laughs> I'm going to say that before Tasha says it. All right. Um, So we're all in agreement. It's a dynasty, right? Like, we can just move past that part, right? So let's go can to we this just part. move past that statement? Mike, and you too, Tasha, but I'm going to start with you, Mike. Kansas City, as I clear my throat, <clears throat> Was 15th in scoring. They led yeah. the league in drop passes and offensive penalties. They had a minus 11 turnover margin. And they still won the damn Super Bowl. Yeah. Because what did I say? They show up and play when they need to. That's Those that's refs not- show up and play. I know that. Stop it. I mean, no, but those, that's, that's no, what my whole greatness is bigger to. than a. It, now, look. Natasha come on here every year talking about the tuck rule, but you still call Brady the goat. Don't make me turn on you, Mike. Come on, some rap. Because hey, Brady ain't no goat. We're going to get to that in just a second. So, oh, Tasha, I'm loving how you're going down the script with that. We right here at this. Mike, don't you start with that. Don't do that because them refs don't help Brady out on many of occasions. Let me digress. As an AFC fan of an AFC team, y'all, I'm completely discouraged. I was rooting for the 49ers to give us some semblance of hope that Kansas City can be beaten. You had Marquez, Valdez, Scantling, and McCole Hartman as your starting receivers, and you won the damn Super Bowl. They like, won with Juju Schuster Smith last year. And he's worse than those two. So, like, what as a as a AFC fan, what do we have to look forward to? Is this gonna be the, the Patriots 2.0? Are they about to rip off like 10 straight? Like, mm. like yeah. at least Super Bowl appearances. Mike, who can beat them? If you if they had all of these even, things working against them and still won the damn Super Bowl, what what, what I gotta go more. I gotta go more AFC team. I can't even think about the NFC team right now. Um, I I automatically look at Burrow um, because he's done it before. He can do it again. Um, and then I go. I'm saying that my hot take. I know my hot take a couple years ago was Detroit. My hot take is the Jets. I think the Jets can beat them. Mm. The Jets can't fight their way out of a brown paper bag. What's in that This cup? is what y'all said when I said Detroit, so. Mike, we'll what's see. in that cup? No, 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 no. I, I yep, 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 yep. So I didn't say that. Yep, 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 yep. yep, yep, yep. What's in that cup, Mike? We, we need to inspect it that cup. Is... Let me get a urine it's sample Vegas out of you. It's my first team. It's invisible. No, that, no, that's called clear in these parts of the other of woods. No, you no, on no, that no, clear no. this morning? On that ever clear? I'm not that clear. The kid he said he says I'm still mad. Like, why did they go for? The, why didn't he go for the field goal? No, Kenny, <laughs> Kenny, you trolling? We we got we got to move on from that. List today, so stick <laughs> around, Kenny. But I, okay, so y'all, this I'm picturing this nightmare scenario, and me and Mike talked about this earlier this week. 
What if Derrick Henry takes a pay cut and signs with Kansas City this offseason? Because all you know what he wants is a ring. And he's looking around like. He man, out here putting on, doing his best glove, Gary Payton, and man. mailman Carl Malone. He out there searching for a ring. They could do that. Yeah. They could do that. Because they have the defense. I mean, they, they literally. The they don't need an offense. I mean, they need a quarterback, Mahomes, that can well, convert third gonna, down, which he does. But if he's going to go to the frozen tundra that is Kansas City, he might as well go on up to be more. Because that's see, my pick. Vegas has Baltimore as the betting favorite yeah. to land Derrick Henry. And, and and Ray agrees with you, Baltimore. Lord Jesus. Look, we already lost Steve McNair. He'd get more money at Baltimore. To, to Baltimore. We lost um, uh, Mason to Baltimore. We lost Samari Roll to Baltimore. Three pillars of our championship run back in the early uh, early 2000s. We cannot lose Derrick Henry. But to Paul's point, like if he's going for a championship instead of money, money is where Baltimore's at. And right. and a chance for a Super Bowl. Well, money. But if he got the most, got cap space, we could give him ten million. Right. I said. I said a chance of a Super Bowl. Right. 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 So no, and, I'm but, it's not about but, money, or he would have stayed where he was. But at. if he, if he wants an automatic Super Bowl, then yeah, go to Kansas City, get one. No, but I think I no, I think the Ravens. That that's gonna that's my AFC team. Y'all know it's, it's betting on black. It's always them and the, the wire. I can't, I can't pick both because they both in the same conference. Because if you take some of that need to run from Lamar and put it on Derrick Henry, Lamar can actually do both. So then it's like when you run in a play, who you going to stop? You going to stop the King? You going to stop old Lamar? Then you got Zay Flowers, who's actually out there playing. They got a decent defense. There is one player that I know currently right now that has a winning record against Patrick Mahomes. His name is Derrick Henry. Mm-hmm. His name, he has a winning race. He's three and two against Patrick Mahomes. So if you do go to Baltimore and to Tasha's point, the run pass, the RPO with, with Henry run the ball and Lamar, like run I the think ball. That was, we need to be it's ready for be that to knock off Kansas City. Do, yeah, Jesus of the of the sky, please don't let Derrick Henry go to Kansas City. Like, please, did you? Come on, man. That'll be like KD going to the Warriors, man. Like, why are we even watching? Speaking so, of KD going to the Warriors, Tasha, we almost we going I'm, I'm saving that for the basketball season, but we going I want to. But it's gonna be old by then. Y'all see the Warriors was trying to get old LeBron. Oh, who? Did, did the crowd make no? I said LeBron because you you wearing the Kings jerseys. I said LeBron. <laughs> no, it's only one King. Is that a it's 45 or a 23? Right Huh? <laughs> is that a what 45 or a 23? I'm wearing the 45 because this was a gift for my 45th birthday. So that that oh, this okay, this okay. was this is only comes out the closet every once in a while. But since we're having a goat debate today, I wanted to make sure I, I had I, I was feeling like that a you wanted to wear it. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Hey, look, I ain't taking yeah. nothing away from Michael Jordan. He y'all old people goat. Us young generation, we got a goat. Which brings me to my next point. Patrick Mahomes. 20, what, he's he's got three MVPs, Super Bowl MVPs, three wow. rings, two regular season MVPs, two 5,000-yard seasons, and he's 28 years old. Is it too early to start this GOAT talk with him still? Because he's ahead of Tom Brady's pace after seven years in the league. Is it too early to say that he's on track? No, I don't think it's too early. Okay, so I just wanted to get that before I went to my next question because that would have made the next question mute. First take post a great question. Tasha, I'm going to start with you because I want to back your ass into a corner. Because you hate both of the players, really. So let so I want to see how, how subjective you're going to be because you ain't too fond of neither one. Oh, this is good. She hates right. three out of the four players. <laughs> right, right. Now you're right, Mike. She hates three out of the four. So maybe we should do you second then. Mike, let's go with you first then. <laughs> let's give her time to think about this because she really don't like these players. Mike. What is more accurate, that Mahomes is closer to catching Brady as the GOAT or LeBron is closer to catching MJ as the GOAT? You up first. Mahomes is closer catching Brady and the fact that Mahomes is only 28 years old and LeBron already done his LeBron. Like, he can't more LeBron to get closer to Jordan. Like, he's already 30, what, 38, 39 years old? Ain't no more. Like you already did what you could try to do. Like you, you're staying there. At least Mahomes could do more. Uh, what I want to see from Mahomes to get on top of that. Your Where you come from? 
what I want to see from Mahomes once he gets older is switching and and doing or coaching his own team, uh, maybe switching to the NFC and try to do that. Because my honest, honestly, I've seen Mahomes, and I still think he could do he could do it himself. But it's Andy Reid just talking him through his ear, um, and I want to see him without that type of coach. They can prop Andy Reid up uh, uh, with with some with some with a back brace. Or put him in a wheelchair and just roll him out there. As long as he got air in his lungs and he can d- call yeah. up a play, he's gonna be there because he's gonna catch Belichick. Now, you are being so disrespectful to the king, but I'm gonna I'm gonna let that ride till we get Tasha's answer. Now, Damien talking about some don't disrespect the air greatness. Damien, you supposed to be on my side. I sat there and cried with you when he kept running through the damn Knicks. Now, I know the Knicks are some count this year, and, and you're feeling good. You're Carolina, and your Knicks are doing well, and my basketball teams are crappy. But don't do this, B. <laughs> I got on Jordan today. I got on Jordan today. I'm see, I'm trying to be ah, Natasha. All eyes on you. All eyes on me. Who's closer? Mahomes to Brady or the king to the greatness of the airness? I'm going to agree with Mike. And just let me put the rec- set the record straight. Stop straight saying now. I hate LeBron. I do not hate LeBron. I just think Jordan is better. Now, with that being said, like Mike said, LeBron has already done his LeBron. He's already, they already, you know, fielding out, you know, putting feelers out there to see if he wants to go somewhere else. He told them no. Palinka politely said, thank you, but no, thank that you. That was Savannah that told them no. Uh, he, he's, he's out there posting the hourglass. Mm-hmm. The time is here. So, yeah. mm-hmm. but I'm going to say Mahomes to Brady, but you guys know how football is. He can have all this success now, and then all of a sudden they start falling off. You never know. Y'all, I didn't even think this would be a discussion point. Like, Mahomes is 28, and he's got – he ain't even halfway to the seven rings yet. But anything well, he's halfway there. Happen. We're talking about the NBA's all-time leading score. He's going to finish 50 years old, man. Like- <laughs> 11,000 and 11,000 being points and rebounds. The man got four MVPs, four championships with three different uh, uh, teams. Wherever he go, the economy booms, and when he leave, it turns into into the Walking Dead. That's what happens when LeBron leaves your city. LeBron is at the at the tender age of thirty nine. He'll be forty in in December. It's averaging. Thank you. Mike. Thank you Mike. What do you say, Mike? Thank you, Mike. We can he, duke it out. You know, what he's doing is speaking for both of us. Thank you, Mike. Whatever you said, you mumbled it because you didn't want me to catch that. The man is averaging 25, 7, and 9 right now at the, at the tender age of 39. What was Jordan doing at 39? He had a beer belly and gold eyes at 39 <laughs> playing for the Wizards. Was anybody calling the play for the Was anybody calling the trade for MJ at, at when he was with the Wizards? But um, so you saying now, all now, this? Wait a minute. The David says it needs to be a Mahomes to Montana debate first. Is Montana getting getting slighted in all this, Tasha? That's your boy. I mean, he said course. first. Of he course. said first. Because y'all know Montana set the set the standard. Yeah. Hey, four and zero in the Super Bowl is four and zero in the yeah. Super Bowl. He said Montana set the standard when it came to quarterback play. Brady came and went over the top of Montana. As much as I hate to say that. What makes Grady great is not I don't because y'all know I'm not big on oh he got 1800 rings I'm not big on that it's his longevity and still how am I trying to say people still fearing Brady even though Brady was out you never knew what Brady was going to do now I know you're gonna try to say oh but LeBron been playing for fit for 40 years what? no one fears LeBron <laughs> anymore. They look at LeBron in awe, but they he ain't don't. no dog. That's why they don't fear he what? He ain't a what? He ain't no dog. He ain't got that in him. Mike, I'm gonna give you a chance to take this back before I cut this up into a reel. I'm 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 gonna give you a chance to take this back. The LeBron LeBron no. ain't got no dog in him. 
down 3-1 to no, the Golden man, State Warriors. No, man, he ain't got Warriors. no fight. Come on. 73 and 9 Golden State Warriors, and he ran through them My 45 God. and 30, like a triple double say, in game seven. There has never been a time in Jordan's playing career that I didn't think Jordan was going to make the right decision. And he always did. Even when you take throwing out the ball to, to Steve Kerr for Steve Kerr to hit that game winning shot, that was the right decision. Who does LeBron so take? So Steve Kerr who does, hit that shot who with does LeBron, LeBron pass decision? the ball to? A fool that's standing there was like, doo, 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 doo. So LeBron if don't Kerr make sense. that shot, is it the right LeBron decision? LeBron ain't got no dog in him when it comes to certain situations. I'm not going to say he ain't got no dog in him because he has shown that he can put ice water in his veins, a la KD. However, when it comes to ain't critical, no KD shade today. when it comes to critical decision making, I'm not going to trust LeBron. I'm going to go with Jordan every time. And I don't even like Michael Jordan. That was just the fact that, why because he got a children's school, because he ain't punch a teammate <laughs> in the face. Is that why? Because because he loved his family. Because he comes off as a family man. Well, somebody what? put a, said it was some comedian was like F LeBron school. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> somebody was like F his school. <laughs> you look the the Mike. You lost me with the he ain't no dog. Now, come on now. Look, That's look, just what I think. That's a, I, I I read it how I see it. Yeah, he got some dog in him, but I wouldn't necessarily. It's different. It ain't no Kobe. It ain't no Jordan. Yes. It's different. Yes. What makes what? Why is Kobe more of a dog than LeBron? Man, because Kobe Bean wasn't having it. Just like when he told them take his shoes off, because the whole yeah. team wasn't playing. Had that man going out in the locker room and take all the people's shoes who had on his shoes because they wasn't playing up to standards. LeBron puts up with that. Ain't no way in hell you got AD with his 16-inch 16 one, 16 eyebrows straight across out here playing like he's scared of the damn ball. They got you there, AD, simply because if LeBron is gone or LeBron is not there, if LeBron is on the bench, you're supposed to take over. You only take over when LeBron is in the game. He won a chip with AD. So first Man. of all, there. Now, and I'm, second and I'm of not, all, second and I'm of not all, let's, say let's, anything let's, about it being in the bubble. But it was in the bubble, just like every all the other teams were in the bubble. They had the same opportunity to win, just like the Lakers did. Let, let, also, me, let, me, let me say this, so we can move on to to a bigger point that you had started to make before before Mike got me railroaded with that blasphemy. Now y'all talk about fear. And being a dog and all of that. Y'all seen the last dance? Did the front office fear Michael Jordan? When he yeah. told them to go make all these moves and they told Michael to go sit his black ass down somewhere when yeah. he was fighting with Jerry Krause, when he Michael wanted to all these, Jordan, he wanted to keep Charles Michael, Oakley. If if you give me, if you say bet all my property down here in Dominican Republic, all my savings on Jordan or LeBron. I'm putting everything on old googly gold eyed Jordan. And in the famous words of Jay Z, bet everything you're worth, you lose your tie and your shirt. Betting against the king. That's like, like okay. I'm not putting no, no money. Nobody feared him. They let him retire. You saw I'm the last dance. Putting, they let I'm him not retire putting no money on LeBron. They kept that coach. If, if, if it's between Jordan and LeBron, I'm not putting no money on no, LeBron. No, Mike, don't run from the smoke, Mike. Don't run. Don't run from the smoke. No, right. see, Mike threw a rock and then and, and pointed over to your yard. So now he's seeing me and you over there talking it out while he's looking out the curtains. Like, no, nah, Mike, don't do that. So Abner, Abner. <laughs> oh, 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 no, oh, now he gotta go, y'all. Great discussion. And you could have told us you had a hard out, but no, nah, man, you ran from the smoke. Now, sorry, sorry, I missed today. Flew back in, but still got that energy. Well, shouts out to him on your on your new gig. Shouts out to you, champion. Natasha, let's talk about this real quick. What is your criteria for the GOAT for greatest of all time? And anybody that's watching, feel free to chime in with this. I mean, because to me, again, it's not necessarily the rings. The rings do play a part because the rings add a little luster right. to it. But you right. have. But it's not the only thing, though, right? Right. It's not the only right. thing. I would always put in there like longevity, again, which okay. LeBron has the longevity. I'm not gonna sit up here. And, and, and we're talking across the board now, just for, yeah. for your criteria for yeah. your goal, because it's all subjective and everybody's is different. I was just curious of what weighs the most for you. Uh 
I'm going on longevity, importance, and like how you can just really draw people into you. Like that's a to me that's impact. right. To me, that's that's just that's just gold stuff. Like I'm not gonna ever say that y'all never hear me say Brady is the goat over Jerry Rice. That'll never come out of my mouth. But I do know that if you got two people walking down the street, people are gonna know who Brady is and not know who Jerry Rice is. That's true. That's that, true. That, that's, true. that's true. But Jerry Rice is my goat and he will always be my goat. It's just subjective and what you really, you know, what, what somebody would consider. A lot of people say it's the rings, it's the right. championships. Charles right. Barkley, one of the greatest sports, if not the greatest sport of all time, he ain't got no rings. Y'all gonna say right. that man ain't, ain't a goat in his position? Wait a minute, is this Shane? Don't trust the perspective. She thought the Niners would win. Bro, we're here for. Oh, she took her glasses off. Now, bro, we done forgave you and them refs. Don't come in here. I like you missed it. Run up, get done up. You better Google run up, get done up. King Skinny Pimp, Crime Mob, and Glorilla. Run up, get done up. <laughs> to your point, Natasha. Hey, Justin. Your, we were congratulations, you Justin. Is it, that what right. you wanted? We Look, we get it. Y'all won. We sick of y'all. Chiefs, we sick of it. Um, let somebody else win for a change. But it's fun. It, it's not funny, but it, it, it's a fun discussion to have with you because you watch all sports, tennis, boxing, Olympics, track and field. Hell, you, you'll even break down the figure skating goats. So I was always curious as to... You know it's been 40 years since Torval and Dean. I'm sorry. Now, Davey says it's the era you played in uh, plays a factor, too, along with football. Numbers yeah. are all subjective to the area. Now, Damien's point is, is exactly to my point about basketball as opposed to football. Let me leave that up there for a second so people can, can put that with what I'm saying. Uh, Bill Russell had 11 rings. He was and 11 nobody, and 1. Nobody's calling him the GOAT. Nobody's calling him the GOAT. And, 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 he, nobody's... Was and he was playing under segregation. And he was right. playing in a Boston Garden that was full of cigarette and cigar smoke. Right. They were smoking inside the garden when he played. And he was playing in Chuck Taylor's. <clears throat> but nobody's going to give those credits because of the era he played in. He played against a bunch of plumbers, a bunch of people who worked at the airline uh, in the offseason and things like that. Jordan in the 90s, because of the boom of the Magic and Bird era, it was more of a global game. Well, really, Jordan globalized it. It was an American sport before Jordan came on the scene and made it global. The Barcelona Olympics and that whole Dream Team tour really just added to his lore. Can like, he was the biggest thing on planet Earth. Can you imagine going to Barcelona, Spain, and it is a billboard from the ground up to the sky with your face on it? Right. Now, he's showing you love. There you, there you go. Yeah, Justin's a good dude. We look, we gotta let you uh, to the victor go to spoil. So today we gotta just eat crow because your team did it. But the but it is it's, it's so subjective. And I, I look at the era because really, and I'm not even laughing when I say this. As a Cowboys lo lifelong fan, I can personally attest that Jerry Rice is one of the best football players I've ever seen play. Ever, ever. For the fact that he didn't have the ball every play, the impact that he made in them games. There's no 49ers without Jerry Rice in the 80s and 90s. Then he went to Oakland and went to another Super Bowl. Like, like there is a case to be made for one Jerry Ballhead Ho Rice. Um, now you know I had to I had to do that because I can't stand Jerry Rice. I hate him. He cost my Fort my Cowboys so many Super Bowls. <laughs> we was right there. We was right there. He ran us out, ran us out of the gym. But 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 with like but with basketball, you know, Jordan six is like the benchmark. But in football, we don't really count them like rings like that. Like Brady has seven rings, yes, but uh, it's just really subjective. Real quick, can you think of who your baseball goat is, just off the top of your head? Uh, mine would be. Oh, I can't say him because I want to say Barry Bonds. But it, am I being a prisoner of the moment? Uh, I would say. It, yeah, it's hard to argue against Barry Bonds. It's even he's not my favorite. Everyone knows Dale Strawberry is my favorite baseball player of all time. Uh, Barry Bonds. And I mean, I know the league, the league, um, 
the Hall of Fame is keeping him out because of what he did. But the streets know. But the, the streets street. know. The streets know. Harry Bonds was that boy when he was with Bobby Bonilla. Yes. The Killer Bees, they was yes. not to be played with. Yes. So, okay, what about boxing? Do you have a boxing goat? Because to Damien's point, that's era related as well. You have like the 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 Muhammad Ali era, then the you, then the Floyd you know, Mayweather honest, era. Then. I always like Sugar Ray Leonard. Not okay. saying that, not saying that he's a goat, but, but of it's course, objective. So he's your goat. Like like everybody can have their own, in my opinion. But then of course, what what put the most splash out there? You had to pay for most of his matches, and that was Mike Tyson. Right. We, so, we does, fight- so then where does that put Evander Holyfield, who's two and zero against him? Like it's so subjective. Because one can say he's the goat over Holyfield because of corporate impact and all that. We watch those boxing matches. We could watch that on regular television. You had more eyes on boxing back in those days. But Derek Jeter's a good one. Yeah, Derek Jeter. I like Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter's a good one. Okay. All right. Now, real quick, we have All Star Weekend coming up. Right, it's going on right now in the NBA, and. um, there tonight there's going to be a special challenge that I want to get your thoughts on Tasha. We have Steph Curry in a three-point challenge against WNBA star Sabrina uh Ion Ionescu of the Inescu. New York Liberty. She's who? Ionescu. Ionescu. Okay, I knew you would kid. See, I told you she knows all of her sports. I knew she would help me on that. Now, she's currently the WNBA single season three-point record holder. Is this a good or a bad look for, for Steph Curry? Can he win either way? It's almost like when they had Jesse Owens out there racing that horse. Hold on. What did you say, Tasha? You remember when they, you know, after Jesse Owens, when he came back and defeat the Nazi Hitler in the in the 36 Olympics over there, and he really didn't have anything else to do, and, you know, he was hard on his, on his luck, and they had that man out there racing horses. You think this is like a shtick like that? I mean, it is because, let's just face it, NBA All-Star Weekend is not what it was when we were growing up. No, it's never going to be that again. All we had to see, it wasn't no celebrity game. It wasn't none of that. All we needed to see was the three-point, the slam dunk, and then the game. That's all we needed. Oh, She said, Steph, go, Steph. Your daughter said, okay, y'all, wrap it up. She's, She's over us. Now, look, y'all going to miss us the next two weeks because we're going on vacation. Right, we're trying to get all this out now because we're on vacation for two weeks. Right, and the dunk uh, dunk contest is trash. Uh, yes. I'm going to be watching Michigan versus Michigan State on Fox tonight at 7 o'clock anyway. So, And uh, I'm going to watch yeah. Oppenheimer because I watched The Color Purple Musical last night. Damn, didn't that, that, that went out on uh, HBO in like three weeks. Like, that didn't do too good in the box office, huh? All right, well, it's a good since, movie, since, though. since she told us to, to wear our prophylactic and wrap it on up, who are you shouting out this week, Tasha T. Sizzle? Uh, I am shouting out my friend, um, her, I call her Millie, but her name is Milagros Cruz. She is the lady that does my laser. You know, she keeps you good looking like a Mexican hairless down here. <laughs> um, it's her third anniversary for her shop. She is the best, in, I say, in this country. And she laughs when I say that. At you know, getting off the laser, uh, laser hair removal and other things. Uh, got a shout out, Caitlin Clark for yes. Uh, and I watched it. Well, the, that part I didn't watch the whole game. Uh, for her breaking the all season, but the, the all time scoring record for women's basketball, even though the crowd was trying to throw some salt. Uh, talking about Cheryl Swoops, which I'm not gonna do is disrespect Cheryl Swoops. That part, he sizzled that part. part. Be Cheryl Swoops, we just gonna put that out there. Uh, uh, that's about it. Oh, somebody had a birthday. Oh, y'all know my little friend Carlos, who does everything for me and Gino. He he put all the stuff up in the new house. Carlos's birthday is on Monday, guys. He'll be 36. Well, happy birthday to him. I have a couple of shout out birthday shout outs. I want to send a shout out to my nephew, Kenny Mann, who celebrated a birthday on the 15th. Uh, so happy birthday. Hope you had a great day, Kenny Mann. Also, since we won't be on the show next week, I want to send a shout out and a b- birthday. Uh, hello to Martrice Elaine Hastings. She will be 21 and finally old enough to drink next weekend. So uh, happy birthday to you, Martrice. May you have 21. the best birthday ever. Okay. Okay, Trees. 21 years old, old enough to drink. 
You know what I'm saying? The happy birthday wishes uh, come in. Um, so real quick, who? That's the All Star lineup. Who wins tonight? I mean, tomorrow, the East or the West? You know, I'm gonna go, go for the West. I'm going for the West too because it's Team LeBron all day. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long football season. We've been grinding, grinding, grinding. We're about to go on a two week vacation. And you'll see us back at the start of March for March Madness, the start of NBA, uh, NFL free agency, and the wind down countdown to the NBA playoffs. So on behalf of Tasha T. Sizzle, it's your boy PL Culture. Have a good one. We out of here. Peace. Feliz Fin de Semana. Hey, Feliz de Semana.